we're here with our Dorchester 2 live PD session on Microsoft Teams class and staff setup. The session is going to focus on class and staff teams and identifying classes, navigation, identifying tabs, and managing channels. Today we have our lead presenter, Kristen Tyner, with us. Note as the attendee, you don't need a microphone or webcam. Please use your Q&A features to ask questions. Also, please be sure you're signed into your device and that your login identifies you because that's how it allows us to award you tech and renewal credit. By joining the Live PD today, you're automatically registered. You'll automatically earn one hour of technology proficiency credit and one hour of renewal credit. Please give us 48 hours to enter your credit into ERO. You can always watch any of our recorded sessions. All of our live PDs are recorded and available in the Microsoft team, DD2 Microsoft Online PD team. You can enjoy them anytime, anywhere. Note, the quality of the streaming audio and video may depend on your internet connection. Please be sure you have a hardline internet connection or a strong Wi-Fi signal. All session participants are registered to win a $10 gift card and $10 three, you might win a $25 gift card. Congratulations to Angela yesterday. She was our winner. And if you didn't note our calendar of events, please note that today. Today's session is by Kristen Tyner on class setup. But on May 5th, Cinco de Mayo will be featuring virtual meetings. Many of you yesterday had questions about virtual meetings. That'll be coming up on May 5th. Next week, we'll really dive into those virtual meetings, but we've got to do some basic setups here today. So now it's time for our featured presenter, Kristen Tyner. Over to you. Hi, Shelly. How are you doing? Great. Thanks um, for being here today. Yeah, I'm excited. Thank you, everyone, for taking the time to attend this session. Um, I'm so excited to share with you some class setup tips. Uh, while we'll be focusing specifically on a class team, a lot of the team um, setups are similar. So you'll, if you are not a classroom teacher, you'll find this very useful as well, hopefully. So if you have at any point you have a question, need me to repeat something or slow down, just put it in the Q&A. We have a couple moderators working for us today and they do a phenomenal job. Um, so let's get started. Uh, a tech tip I learned yesterday from Mr. Dunn's session was filtering. So I have filtered my teams by classes and I'm going to work with um, this class today, language arts section example. You may notice that um, your teams look have a similar setup where they have the name of the class section and then a, a number that is basically gibberish to most people. Uh, you unfortunately cannot change your name, the, the team name, if you are a classroom teacher. Uh, you may see that you can edit the team if you click here and click edit and it looks like you can change the name, but because it syncs from PowerSchool, if you change the name, it will just change right back nightly as it's imported. Now that is a down, uh, a, uh, a negative, but two positives are you don't have to manage your rosters because every night it will import from PowerSchool. And then also when we talk about sync, um, syncing our grade books, it will sync grades from teens automatically to your grade book. So that's um, two positives about the uh, PowerSchool syncing. So since we can't change this name in our class teams, we need another way to identify the team. Now, if you have an option to choose an avatar, a class avatar. So if you teach a science or a language arts class, you can maybe pick a um, Bunsen burner or a William Shakespeare since this is a language arts class. But I'm a middle school teacher, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick the period number that I teach. Uh, I teach, so I'm gonna select upload and I can select any picture of upload, but I wanna pick the period. So I've just searched the web and found a picture I like. 
and I'm going to open it and update it and it will change this picture for me. So now when I go back, I can see that this is third period and this is 10th period and it's easy for students and myself to quickly identify the classes. So how do I identify that? How do I know that this is 10th period? So I select the three dots and select manage team. And here I see myself as a member or as an owner and then down below I will see members and guests. So I, these are where your students are listed and you should be able to easily identify whether this is first period, second period, third period through um, through just clicking that. And if you're on this screen, you can click here and edit team and change the picture from here. Or you can hover over the little picture and change it from there. But this is the easiest way to identify it. A little bit of a workaround with not being able to change that name. So if I'm on members, let's stick here and talk about these tabs. Um, I'm on my member tab. I can't, like I said, if you have a class team, this is going to be imported nightly from you for um, from PowerSchool. If you have created a team, a PLC team or staff team, you can add members. So you just click this button and search for the team. You can add teachers as members. And you can add students. I'm going to add Lara Hayes. And even though Lara Hayes is a teacher, I've put her as a student, so she's going to appear in the students group. But I can go over here and change her to an owner if I want to. I highly discourage you from changing the students to owners of your team. Uh, if you notice over here, the students or uh, the members are listed, the title, their students, teachers, and I have tagged my students. Um, these are just tags that I've created myself. How you could use a tag if you're a staff team and this is a, uh, a first grade teacher, I can tag all my first grade teachers and then I can use the tag when we talk about posts, I can at mention a tag. Um, students, if you lots of times teachers like to do groups or collaborative groups, so you can um, have the students pick group names and then tag the students in that group name. All you have to do to tag a student is click this little tag and select the the tag you want them to to apply. Or if you want to create a tag, just click the tag again and I and create a tag. These tags do not follow students to other teams. They're specific to your team, but I will caution you that every member of the team can see the tag. So it is not a place to identify IEP students or 504 students. That's not how you would use that tag. Um, just want to give you a caution. You can notify the group of people at once by at mentioning a tag and only owners can apply tags. Um, over here, you'll see muting students. If Mr. Dunn was not, was posting comments on the post feature that were not inappropriate, I could mute him individually and have a co private conversation with him about appropriate digital citizenship and how we use the post feature. Um, after I talked with him, I can unmute him. I can mute all students at once. I would probably recommend this at the where you would use this feature from like the beginning of the year before students got into Teams, muting all of them and then having discussions about what appropriate uh, behavior is on our online platform, what your expectations are. But for right now, since we're trying to communicate with kids as much as possible, I would probably leave that unmuted, letting all the kids post until an issue arose. So that's where you manage members. Over here, you'll see you can manage channels from this tab too. We're going to talk about channels uh, over here, but if you, you can see that I have four channels and they're showing for me and for members, I can show for members 
it will make the channel visible in everybody's channel list. I'm going to confirm. This is, we'll talk about show and hide. This does not mean it is, if I uncheck this, this does not mean it is not published for members. It just means it automatically appears for students. As soon as I create the channel, it is published to students or team members. Also, if I have a deleted channel, you'll see I can come over here. I've deleted this channel because I no longer need it, but I can restore it if I need to. And if I, I from here, from here, I can also create a channel. But we're going to work with channels over here later on, so I'm not going to create a channel right now. Settings. This is the time to take some time to look through these and make sure you've set it up to your personal preference. Again, you can change the theme here. There are lots of different places to change that picture. Member permissions is probably where you need to pay close attention. Some of these are defaulted uh, based on our organization's recommendations, but I would recommend that you, you know, leave some of these things unchecked. I wouldn't let kids or members delete or restore channels or move or add or remove apps. Um, I want to be able to delete all the me messages in case the kids post something I don't want them to post. I don't, I would prefer if it was a class, not giving the students op um, options to delete their message or edit their messages so you can see what was posted and not have a kid post something and then go back and edit it. And then you missed it. Um, guest permissions. You probably won't have a lot of guests in your class team and theirs are disabled anyway. Um, at mentions. At mentions are a way to get um, teachers and students attention when you're posting work in the channel. So I would leave this on. You could. If you want to uncheck this, so giving members the option to at channel or at channel name, this will notify everyone who's shown in the mentioned channel in their channel list. So if you don't want students to constantly be at mentioning the, the channel, it then you can turn this off. Team code, you probably won't need this as a classroom teacher because your kids will be auto populated, but your PLC, you can generate a code to join the team. Um, the DD2 online PD would had a code that you can join. You can also search for it in the join teams app. This is a per personal preference, I feel like. So if you would like stickers and memes, to be able to be used on your team, you can allow them or not allow them. It's up to you. And then you can, I'm not going to allow custom memes. I'm they're just going to be able to pick the ones that are standard in teams. So. OK, one note in class notebook. This is a great feature and this will be its own training in the future, but it comes embedded within the team. And we'll um, talk about that later in a um, future training. And then tags, I want to be the only person that manages the tags. You don't want other uh, people to be able to create tags, but that is an option for you to turn on if you want. OK, analytics and apps are other places that you can see some uh, a brief overview of the analytics and who's logged on and I have five active users and nine inactive users of my team right now. For the last seven days. Microsoft Teams is coming out with a upgrade to this soon, so check back and we'll probably have a, um, some good news to share in the future. So and then here is apps and here are the apps that I'm currently using. I can look for more apps. On, uh, I can remove the apps if need be. OK, I'm going to select my general tab right now or general channel, and I'm going to talk about navigation. And for right now, we're going to look at the top part of your screen. And you'll see that this comes standard on every class team. This this we call the navigation bar, and these are tabs over here are channels and these are tabs. And, every, and this is the, I'm on the general channel. 
every channel has a post tab. I think about posts like Facebook. So this is similar to a Facebook feed. And chat over here is similar to text messaging. So it, when I post in my general tab, I will it will appear like a Facebook feed. I can chat over here private text with one uh, with one person or I can group text. So chat is like texting post is like Facebook. So when I am posting. I can do a couple different things to make sure the most people see it. I can just start typing. If you look below here, you'll see this. A and that gives you a little bit more features, a little bit more room to look and you can make there's a lot of different things here. You can make it bold. Prettier do some um, some formatting, but I'm going to start an announcement. So there's a new conversation and then there's announcements. So announcements gets that pretty headline that uh, makes it a little bit bolder, harder to miss for your students. And then you can select over here a, a color or a picture and I'm going to choose an illustration. And I am going to pick this book. I've added it and it says your teacher. This is you and keep working on your distance learning packet. OK, so I've added a um, announcement and a subheading and I'm going to type right here. So. Virtual meeting. OK, so right now I can post this. And. I'm going to do that so you can see it. So I, I've posted this and students may get a notification and I'm going to switch over right now so you can see the student view versus the teacher view. Um, I have asked parental permission from this student, so just check it out right here. OK, so. If you notice. I'm in the. I'm in the general tab and sh she did not get a notification on my activity feed. Um, but I can go back to here. So how do I fix that? How do I get kids to see what I want them to know? I want them to have an announcement. I want them to see it and make sure they don't miss it. So I'm going to reply and say at mention. This is where at mentions come in handy. I can at mention a channel. OK. I can at mention a group. And I can at mention a particular person. So. If you at mention the team, everyone in the team will get a notification and see how I, I could have done that in this. Um, in this announcement, but I just forgot, so that's OK. I can add it afterwards. So if I click back over here, I can see now the difference when I saw that the. When I was looking at the student before, the student only had this bolded. Bolded indicates that you there's been a change in the channel, but if I use at mention, then the student gets a. A alert over here in activity feed and over here it's the one and then I can click on it and see and I can see the work from there. So how to do that? Let me do another announcement so or another conversation. What what's also great about this is if I do another announcement, what if I don't want I have five classes or six classes and I don't want to post do the same uh, announcement multiple times. So I can post in multiple channels. I can select this channel and then I can select channels. So I can post to go ahead and. And I update.
and I've this is at channeling right now, so they'll get a message too. Okay, so I've posted to multiple channels. Um, down here, if I'm attaching a file, if I want to, students to see something, I can browse and select materials from the team that I've talked to them about already. So I can attach a document. I can attach a document from my personal computer or OneDrive. I can attach a recent document. I can add the stickers or emojis if I have enabled those. There's, I can have an option to meet, do a virtual meeting with my students. I don't, don't recommend this. I would probably schedule this meeting and there'll be a meetings, a Teams meeting later on to discuss uh, a, a training on that next week. So tune back into that. And then you can also, this is a fun uh, way to encourage students, you can add praise. So I'm gonna select someone being a team player. I'm gonna say, Ms. Fairburn, you've done a great job this week. And preview, and it's gonna look like that. And We'll send it to her. So lots of different ways and it tags her in it. Um, lots of ways to post in your team. OK, so that's posts. I'm going to go over to files. These are your where you would add class files, and this is going to function a lot like your documents, but I do want to draw your attention to this little lock over here. Um, it's it, class materials is re only for students. This is the place you want to put materials unless you want students to edit it. So right now, folder one is open to all, all team members. So if I upload a document to folder one, everyone in the team can edit it. And for most people, I think there's probably going to be some instances where you don't want students to edit the material, maybe like a PowerPoint or a PDF or your syllabus. You want to put those in class materials because those will be viewable to students only, but not editable. If you want students to edit things, you may want to use class notebook or if you want all students to edit your own assign their own assignment, that's where we would use that assignments tab. So to add a folder or a document, you just click new. And we're going to add the folder. I'm going to call this one PowerPoints because I'm going to put a PowerPoint up here later. And I have created it and I actually want to show you. Some a neat trick, so. I'm going to go to PowerPoint right now and I'm going to upload. Some files. I'm going to take it takes a second for it to load, but there is a workaround for being able to share. Files and make them uneditable because you want maybe want to create a, ch a channel and put different files in there. Um, so I want to click here. And I would like to open this in power in SharePoint, and this is a way to um, kind of manage your folder structure. So open in SharePoint. OK, so here, here you see I am in. SharePoint this team, I'm in Language Arts 8. I have a folder one and a, a folder for PowerPoints. I want my PowerPoints for kids to be able to see, but not have them edit them. So if I click these three dots, I'm going to select manage access. OK, and right now there's some defaults, so I'm the owner, so I have access. Uh, the owner, if it ever changes, has access and then 
visitors are read only and members are edit, have edit rights. But I can change that quickly by clicking here and change that to view. So now PowerPoints, every document I put in there are, is read only to all the members. And if I click on advanced, I can just double check that. And you see, I can see members are have read only permissions, owners have full control and visitors have read control. And if we, even if I want to triple check it, I can check permissions here and I can say, Patrick Dunn, what can you see? Cause you're a member of my class, check now. And you can see that he is read only. So that's great. Gonna go back over to my team and see that I've added those over here. Let me jump over to the, uh, let me jump over to the student view so you can see that on the student view. OK, so now you can see class materials has this. Um, pencil with the little cross. Not sign, not editable, and now PowerPoints are not editable, editable, but folder one is. And I click on PowerPoints and you can see that all these documents are viewable, but not editable. OK. So that's how you add files and folders to your class team. Class notebook and assignments and grades are all upcoming trainings. They're all long enough to be their own training. So I'm going to briefly talk about them, give you a one sentence summary and we'll move along. Notebook is a great integ integration. I see uh, where teachers would be able to use notebook uh, in their class. I see some teachers using just that files, the files system. And then I also see, I see some teachers using both. So it's definitely what fits your uh, school or your class structure. But is I like to think of it as a physical notebook. In my mind, I think of a binder and I think of the, no the notes going in the binder for your students. So each notebook has a private space for each student. So Patrick Dunn's section has Patrick Dunn's work in it. And then we have uh, Jen Fairburn's work has her work in it. And I can kind of flip through what their work, their notebooks look like. Content library is where I put all the notes that I want kids to look at. So that same PowerPoint I just put, put in files. If I wanted to, I could put notebook. And then that collaboration space is where we can all work as a as a class team. OK, assignments are where you're going to go to create assignments and students are going to go to do assignments. You can grade it from here or you can also go to grades. It's a place where you can it will function like a grade book. You can see multiple if I had multiple assignments here. You could see um, you could see the assignments. You can see who has turned it in and you can also return or open student work from the grade book. Uh, this plus sign is an opportunity to add a tab and I'm going to suggest you add clever. Um, so uh, there's not a clever tab, but there is a website and we're just going to put a link to clever on our general tab. So I don't want the tab to be called website. I just want it to be called clever. And I want to just paste the link. I'm gonna copy this link real quick and pop back over to my team and paste it in here. OK, and then I don't really want to post to this channel about this tab, so I'm going to uncheck that and save and it will appear clever right there. And then we can just. When it starts loading. It will go right to that page and we give it a second. Click off of it and then back on it and see what happens. OK. Oh, there we go. 
So then the kids can log back in. They can also um, choose to pop it out into Clever. Uh, I highly recommend using Clever. There was a previous training last week. Um, it's your single sign-on work for you. You want to push kids to there. So instead of putting like an Edmentum tab or a Waterford tab, you're going to tell them put them put it on Clever and then add your apps to Clever so kids can do that have that single sign-on experience. Okay, so we've talked about the navigate the tab top and post files, notebook assignments, grades, and adding another tab if you need another tab. But we're going to jump over here and talk about channels real quick. Um, all, your team defaults to one channel and it's called the general channel. You can definitely function with just one channel and have a folder structure or use the in the in files or class notebook. Um, or you can decide to use multiple multiple channels. So if I had a staff team, I would want to create one for each grade level or one for each each subject. That might be very helpful. Or um, if I'm a classroom teacher, I might want to do one per unit. So I'm going to create a channel. And since this is eighth grade ELA, I'm going to create a channel about a book for them to read. So I'm going to select three dots and select add channel. And I'm going to call this the last book in the universe. And I can add a description if I want, but I'm not going to right now. And the standard privacy is going to um, be fine. And I'm going to automatically show this channel in everybody's channel list. And it's going to populate. OK, great. So there it is right there. And good to go. Well, I just want to mention to you that these default channels default to ABC order. So if I was going to do unit one, unit two, unit three, um, you want to definitely use the number one, number two, number three, because in the alphabet three comes before two. So unit three would come before two in your list. Um, just something fun we found out when playing around with this. Um, if I am done with last book in the universe and I want to hide it, I can click here and hide it. But remember, this doesn't unpublish it for kids and it actually doesn't unshow it for kids. This is just my view. So I can hide all these channels. I'm going to pop off and come back so you can see what it looks like. I've hidden these channels, but it doesn't hide them for anyone but me. This is my view. So hiding is what it is for what it looks like for me. So I'm just going to show them again. So to hide or show, you just Hover over it to hide or show. And then let's talk about channel notifications. Definitely something that you want to get set up correctly. Um, so you are, especially now that we're doing distance learning, you want to be able to um, not miss anything. So channel notifications are something that you have to set up per channel, which I think is a good idea be, um, based on how differently you would use each channel. So all new posts I only want to show in the feed, but I also want to include replies. Um, and then channel mentions notify me each channel time this channel is mentioned. You can show in feed, you can do a banner feed, or you can turn it off. Okay, so I'm going to save because this is fine. This one might be unchecked for you. But I want kids, if I want to see what the kids post, and in the settings that you may have changed to where kids can't start new posts, you definitely need to check this if you check include all replies so you can see when the kids have posted something. So go ahead. So like I said, you have to do this for each channel, but again, this might be different. So like for elements of literature, I turned that off for new posts, but I kept it on for in the general. Um, let me show you manage channel next. So if we're going to manage a channel, Anyone can post, anyone can post, and it shows an alert posting. Everyone will be notified, or only owners can post. So right now in the general, I'm the only person that can post. But I may want in a different channel to allow 
other people to post. Okay, and definitely there are different things. Um, in general, they don't allow this option, but in your other channels, when you manage channel, you can do channel mo um, moderation. And then you can choose, you'll be the moderator, and then you can allow members to reply to channel messages and allow these things too. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is private channels. Private channels uh, might be something that you would be interested in, like on a staff team, the SPED department might need a private channel because there are appropriate issues. Or if you're a classroom teacher and you want to do some collaborative work and you want to give kids a workspace. So I want to create a private channel. So I'm going to do the same procedure. I'm going to add a channel. And I'm going to call this the green group. And then I'm going to create a private channel. Now you have to take your time and do this because I will say that you once you create a channel, you accidentally made it public, you have to delete it and recreate it and then you can't use the team name again. So I'm going to go ahead and add a couple students to my. Green group. And you'll see when it's private, it will have a little lock symbol. And now only uh, Jen and Patrick can work in here. And I can at green group. And it will notify them. And then so it gives you the benefit of being able to at mention a private channel and have them get the auto the notification automatically. If I at mention elements of literature, for example, if the student has not put the notification on to get mentioned from that, then they won't get a notification. But you can also do the same kind of thing if you uh, do an by doing a tag. So you can tag them as Green Group or rock stars or ITS. And then they have their own private workspace here. They have files that they will be able to edit and no one else can see. So another student would not be able to see Green Group's work or even that Green Group exists. So they can add files. They can collaborate on files. They can add, you can add, you can add the teacher or the owner can add apps for them. There are some limitations on what apps work in private groups, but just like planner, you can't add a planner specifically to a um, a private group. You can only add it team wide. OK, so let's say I am done with. Um, done with this channel. Let's say our green group did their project. It was absolutely fabulous and I was ready to um, move on from this. So I can go ahead and delete it. Let me and just by doing the three dots and deleting the channel. I want to preface this by saying that I'm going to delete it. And I'm actually going to go show you here channels and you can see that it's been deleted. Green group is deleted. I can restore it because Lots of times we use, if I use group one through five, I'm probably going to do collaborative group in the future, and I can't create another channel called green group without, it will tell me I can't. Bill says another channel already has that name, so try a different one. Now, that gets frustrating, but what you can do is say, oh, I don't, I can restore this or I can restore my channel. And edit the channel and make this a random A, B, C, D, E, F, G and save it and then recreate green group as a new group. So that's a little workaround for you. Um, to reuse team names. This helps like because I've ran in this with uh, teachers is they 
accidentally create a green group, but they created it public. And they're like, oops, I now I can't use green group again because I I didn't make it private. But you can restore, you, you can change public green group's name to randomness and then create a, another group that works for you. Um, let me go back. Uh, I want to tell you to train the kids to mention you. So if you're they're working in that um, that private group that they're in and they need you, you are going to set your notifications uh, to where you are not getting all these uh, all these uh, updates of every time something's changed because if they're doing group work, you're not going to want every time a new post happens. So. Um, train the kids to at mention you. So if a student says they're working hard, they're just typing in things and they're like, oh, I have a question for Mrs. Tyner. She'll out nest at mention her. So then you get the notification. So definitely train the kids to use the at and then type your name. Oh, I probably can't at mention myself. OK, she's probably not in missed. Who's in this group? Oh, me, I missed her. OK, so. The next thing I would like to show you is the elements. Uh, oh, so elements of literature channel, so I'm working in this channel and let this is a unit that you could use. So you're with the kids. So again, every channel is going to have posts, files. It's going to have some notes, that notebook section. So this each, every channel you create from that one note is going to have its own section in there. So there's my unit. One, elements of literature. And then I've added this tab. And all I did was um, look for PowerPoint. Okay. And oh, remove. I'm going to re add it so you can see. And I actually have these PowerPoints here. And I want to show you the all about teams like this is my PowerPoint for this lesson, the elements of literature PowerPoint that we're going to use in class today. And I'm going to post about this channel. And I'm going to save it. So it's not all PowerPoints are going here, a specific PowerPoint. And I can rename this and call it the elements of literature. I could call it Wednesday's lesson. And there you go. And this is where the privacy and the, the reading restrictions matter because now if I go as a student, I can see the student's view will say this is read only, you can't edit it. But if we're if I'm telling my kids, okay, kids, clap up. Uh, click on the elements of literature tab, uh, channel, go to the PowerPoint tab. Where this is the PowerPoint we're working through today. I can see this. I can have a conversation about it. Um, I can say uh, review this PowerPoint. Before our virtual meeting. And they will see that. I can hide it. I can make it bigger. If this is not big enough for you, the kids can open it in the desktop app or they can also pop it out. It can also open in browser. So lots of features and this is not just a feature of the PowerPoint tab. It's any tab that you um, share. The kids have that feature to look at it in the browser. So it makes it a little bit bigger for them. OK. I'm going to close this out. And you can see I'll go back to the team and I've added a new channel and I've put the chat there so the kids can see it here where I've posted it and then they can see the chat. So again, I can click from here or the student could click from here and it would open the PowerPoint as well. So they could click here 
or they could go to posts and see that I've posted something and still see the see the PowerPoint. And then they can also go back here and see that tab conversation. So there's kind of two places where kids can find that information. OK, the final thing I want to show you about um, Teams today is the search or type command. Up at the top, you'll see search or type command. So if you're looking, working in Teams and you're like, where is this? So if I type in e-learning, if I was looking, I knew we were talking about e-learning last week, but I need, can't remember where that file is. I can see all these messages that refer to e-learning. I can also see if a person mentioned it. Obviously, there's no, I can search for people. And then I can search for files that mention e -learning. So oh, there's the file I was looking for because it has the type name into it. Um, if you see here, I can also go from search for uh, filter from who is it from? Or I can search for for chats or channels and then more filters, a date range, a specific team that is from to kind of filter the results you have from when searching for e-learning. So great way to search for something that you're looking for because it you can get a lot of chats and a lot of channels and a lot of teams going. So great way to search using that feature. Another thing to look for is the forward slash. And th those uh, commands are, there's lots of different ones, but you can change your status with, if you do forward slash available. So if I type in available, I've over here before I was in a meeting, now I'm available. Can you uh, be right back? It'll change. Another one is help. And this will take you straight to Teams Help. Lots of great stuff here for Teams training, quick guide, um, general information for Microsoft Teams. And then another feature I like is the forward slash go to, and then you can go right to a team or channel. And then I wanna go to the DD2 online PD, and that will take me directly to that channel without having to go through all these things over here search for online pd oh nope i can just go forward slash go to and the charts and i'm back on my team so quick little search and type command at the top that kind of helps you out if you are trying to save a couple seconds throughout your day I think that's about it. If anyone has any questions. Hey, Kristen, fantastic job today. I know that we had lots of questions coming in. Uh, also, really, really great job by our Q&A moderators, uh, Anna Musselman, Patrick Dunn, Lisa West, and Alexandra Vick. Uh, one thing that I will ask Kristen, could you possibly show, I know you did it at the very beginning and maybe some folks were still coming in, but we did have some questions about how to uh, change the name of a team so that it sticks, you know, that you have that issue because it's synced to PowerSchool, it's going to revert back every single night. Is that something that you could show again? I would be happy to show it again. Yes, I, you are definitely right. You cannot change the name of a class team. So if it was coming from PowerSchool, you can't change it. So if you go to manage or go to the three dots and select edit team, it's going to look like you can change it. I can change it, but it's going to go back to that language arts a section randomness. But the workaround for that is to go ahead and change that avatar, that class avatar, to something that indicates the period. So you can choose one of these, but I like to just choose the period number. So if it's first period, second period, third period, I'm going to find a picture I like on the internet, I'm going to save it, and I'm going to just choose it as my avatar. And I'm going to update. 
So if I look at it now, I'm going to un so unfilter my teams because I've got multiple teams here that have numbers. So now I can easily see like, oh, second period, third period, 10th period, here's sixth period. All of those teams are going to pop up for you. So, and you can filter classes, so then you can see other ones. But that way it makes it a little bit easier. I know it's frustrating to not be able to change the team name, but you get, it's better in the long run for rosters because you're going to, because it sinks in power school, no, you can't change the name, but your rosters are going to be, your kids are going to be in there every day. They enroll today, they'll be in there tomorrow or the day after. And then that, that power school sink, once you get that worked out, that's going to be a godsend. So yes, you can't change the name. That's unfortunate. Get those two other good things, that great things. All right, great. Uh, one other question we had was how a teacher could add a co-teacher to her team. Like if you had a resource ELA or a resource math teacher that also wanted to access the files and things that you had available to students, how do you add a co-teacher? Okay, so you can go to um, manage team, the three dots manage team, and you'll see your members. And you can go ahead and search for that person and add them. So I'm going to let me add um, Patrick and he can be a co-owner of my team. Or if you're just having a person, if you just need a teacher to be to see the files, so a resource teacher to see the files, you might you just might be able to add them as a member so they can have access to the files. If you're adding another teacher to your team, they have access to everything you have access to. So they have access to your grade book in Microsoft Teams. They have access to every kid's grade in, te in the Teams. So you may want to be he um, hesitate before doing that and just maybe add them as a member because as a member, they can see everything. They just can't upload or, or, or depending on the settings, they, they just can't get access to your grade book. Um, they can all so <coughs> you can do it I just wanted you to think about it before you do right right okay good good to know can you clarify for us the hidden channels uh, like can students see hidden channels could just kind of clarify what what hidden channels are who can see them who can access and who can't yes definitely again show and show and hidden channels are just your view. So everyone's are going to look different. So if I want to hide group one, or if I want to hide elements of literature, because this is unit one and we're done with elements of literature. If I've hidden it, the only person it hides it for is me. If I go over to my student view, No, oh, hers was already hidden, so that was a poor one, but let me hide a different one. So if I'm going to hide, she can hide grammar and mechanics. It doesn't hide it for me. It's all personal preference. These are, show does not mean publish. Show means it's showing in my view. So it kind of makes more sense if you think about it like in the team, like a PLC or staff team. Like if I'm a sixth, eighth grade ELA teacher, I'm not going to need to see sixth grade math. So I'm going to hide sixth grade and I'm going to hide math, but that's not going to affect it for anyone else except the way I, except for me. So hidden team, hidden channels are great. You can tell the kids, hey, kids, we're done with unit two, hide unit two, but it doesn't delete the channel. It doesn't unpublish the channel. It just hides it from their view. They can still go back to and refer to it. Good, good to know. Hey, uh, under channel notifications, what does get email address do? I'm, so will you repeat that question? Yeah, when you go to uh, underneath channel notifications, what does the option to get email address, what does that do? 
OK, so that's great feature for a staff team. So you can get this email. At, oh, sorry, cancel. Uh, move my mouse, get email address. And it's going to give you an email address. And you can copy it and I can take this to. Outlook. and paste it here and then I can talk to the team about that and And then you can see that I've gotten the, e the the general. It sends a copy of the email address. And then it cop sends a copy of the email to the channel and then everyone who's has an email address also gets the email. So this is super helpful for like your staff teams. So if you want to eat like a lot of us, you have distribution lists of the entire faculty or our eighth grade team or our math department, you get the channel and instead of typing that distribution list, you use the, the channel email address. And then you then you use the email address, it emails the people and then it also puts a copy of the email in the posts and it creates a folder called email addresses and then all the email addresses are in one place for you to refer to. So good um, for reference. Great question. Yeah, that is that's that's really helpful to know. Uh, one final thing we we had a few people that had a question about if you could show actually it's not a question, but they want to know if you could show how to add clever again. You know, yes. clever is that kind of hub that we want to direct students to. So if you could show how to add clever again. Sure, let me delete it and then I'll re edit. OK, so up here and like I said, you can add different things to different channels. So I'm going to add it to the general cha channel because clever is something you use all the time. I put, um, go ahead and press that plus thing and it says add a tab and then I'm going to select a website because clever is just a website. I'm going to name it clever. And then I'm going to paste the link here. So I'm going to go over to. Um, Clever again and copy the link. Go back to Teams. And paste the link. And I can post. I'm just leave it here so you can see that the way that looks and press save. So now it says added a tab at the top of this channel guy that telling my team. Here's clever. I can click on it here or I can go up here. The tab's always going to be here. And it takes a second to populate. You know, we just added it. There you go and send the so the kids go and log in here and you can use this with. All, um, anything it doesn't have if you're adding a website, it doesn't have anything. It could be anything. It could be that PowerPoint tab. Um, tab app that we added as a tab or it could be Edpuzzle or Nearpod. It just depends. I highly recommend using adding Clever and your, your websites and your apps that you use though through Clever because you're going to get that single sign on experience and that you may not get in Teams. Um, but if you're just having a website that you want to look at, you could definitely add it up to the top. But like I said, you could log in with that directly and it would Populate, populate in this window, or you can um, make them expand the tab and make it bigger so kids have a bigger view, or you can also go to the website. So if this isn't loading for the kids or for you, you can um, press that little uh, globe button, the web button, and the worldwide web button, and it will take you to the website on the 
in the um, on the internet. Awesome, World Wide Web. I don't think I've heard that term <laughs> in probably the past a, eight years. I guess that's why it was a, a, a why it was an Earth or a globe. Yeah. Well, we'd like to thank Kristen Tyner again for presenting today. Uh, hopefully we answered your questions. Please remember Team Dorchester, if you ever want to go back, you can go to the live event again uh, through stream on the online PD team to watch this again. The Q&A is also available if you want to scroll through that Q&A to look at any questions and answers that were published there. Thank you again to Anna Musselman, Patrick Dunn, uh, Lisa West and Alexandra Vick for handling our Q&A session. Before we leave, uh, we do want to announce that Christina Roram from Eagle Nest is our winner of the day for the $10 gift card. And Microsoft Teams virtual meetings will be covered next week on Tuesday, and then we'll have other sessions Wednesday and Thursday of next week. Again, thank you everyone, and please continue to stay safe as we go through distance learning.